Hello everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate closed loop simulation of push pull converter in MATLAB. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it. Only then you'll get the videos that we post regularly. All right, let's get started. So this is the MATLAB model of a push pull converter in closed loop mode. Just to give you an overview of how it looks like, I've added this picture over here. Please take a screenshot of it and it will be really helpful while simulating. So with respect to open loop simulation and design of push pull converter, uh, it's already done in one of our previous video it will be available in the end screen and in the de description the link will be provided in case you haven't watched that watch that because that will give you a greater perspective with respect to the design aspect of push-pull converter with respect to closed loop simulation we will again be starting from the scratch however the design values of LCR and supply voltage frequency that we have chosen will be from our previous video that is with respect to the design pass design aspects so once this is done let's get started let's go to MATLAB and start us all right here we are in matlab so we will be searching for the blocks that we want over here so at the first place we'll be requiring a power give block search for power give and add that we need a voltage measurement block so add voltage measurement block as well once these two are added we need a dc voltage source uh, which is used as a supply so add the ones that are there in black the blue ones are used for signals and system digital signal processing applications so once that is added we need a mosfet which is used as a switch so uh, search for mosfet scro scroll a little down and add this block as well we're not using thyristor uh, because we need an external commutation circuit for uh, turning off thyristor and that's the reason why we're not using that so we need a multi-winding transformer so search for transformer you'll be getting multi-winding transformer uh, at this place so add this block as well so once we've added the transformer we need a diode so search for diode and you'll be getting it right at the bottom scroll a little down and choose the ones that is there in black so once we've added this as well we need to have a series rlc branch Later on, we can convert it to a resistor, capacitor or inductor based on our requirement and we will be seeing the output waveform through a scope. So search for scope and you'll be getting it over here right at the top. So once this is done, we have added all the blocks with respect to open loop simulation, but we have to do a closed loop model, isn't it? So what are the parameters or blocks that we want? We need a constant block, which is used as a reference value. So we'll be entering our reference values over here. And once this is done, it will be uh, given to a block called as subtract. So search by some, you'll get all the blocks that are quite related to it. And that's the reason why we do this. So add the subtract block. And once this is done, we'll be giving the output to the PID controller. So search for controller and you will be getting PID controller right at the top with respect to S domain. So add that uh, controller as well. Uh, so the output of the controller will be given to an ABS block, which basically gives the absolute value of the signal that is uh, there with respect to the PID controller. Uh, repeating sequence block. So search for repeating sequence. And uh, this will basically look like a sawtooth waveform generator, but nevertheless, it is quite similar to it. And it will be compared with respect to the absolute value of the signal and we'll be giving it to a relational operator so search for relational operator and we'll be using greater than or equal to over there so once this is done uh, we will be giving uh, the output to a logical operator which is a not gate and give to one of the switches and the other switch will be given directly from the output of the greater than equal to operator so once we have added this we'll be placing them in appropriate position so that we can get started with the circuit diagram all right here we are now uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be disabling the measurement port with respect to the switches that is with respect to the diode and mosfet that we are using so disable that and once that is done we will be uh, double clicking on the multi winding transformer so we'll be entering 2 2 in the primary and secondary with respect to the number of tappings that we want change this to si unit and we'll be entering the parameters over here so we will be uh, uh, designing it for 38.38 watt according to our design procedure enter that and and our switching frequency is 150 into 10 power 3 so enter that value as well so once we've entered uh, both these values now the supply voltage that we have chosen is 50 enter that across primary windings because there are two tappings that are taken so uh, the secondary voltage is 17.5 and the secondary voltage is 17.5 so we'll be entering this and now uh, we will be um, making sure all of these values are equal to zero so uh, so that we don't want additional drops across uh, the winding due to the res winding resistances 
inductances or the leakage inductances so we'll be copy pasting this values over here now magnetization resistance if you see it is of the order of 10 power 5 so that's very high we'll reduce it to say equal to 50 and we'll reduce the leakage inductance to uh, magnetization inductance uh, to be equal to 50 henry once all of these are done click on ok so we'll be shorting these two terminals and uh, we'll be giving it to the dc supply uh, make sure that the switch is in downward direction in this particular way the source should be in this particular direction uh, of course if like at times if students make a mistake of having them in the opposite direction then consequently you will never be getting the output so be very careful with respect to that so uh, i will be connecting it uh, to this point and this with respect to this point the source will be shorted together and it will be given to the negative terminal of the dc supply consequently uh, we will be giving the gate pulses from the output of the closed loop model so once this is done uh, we will be connecting the diode in this particular fashion and uh, we need another diode isn't it so uh, connect this diode over here and uh, we'll be shorting these two terminals at this point we will be using an inductor uh, according to our uh, design and its value is designed to be equal to 268.19 micro henry so enter uh, 268.19 uh, and it should be in micro so be very careful while entering the parameters as well and once this is done we will be copy pasting uh, the inductance and uh, we'll be using a capacitor over here so change it to be a capacitor and its value is chosen to be equal to 41.42 nanofarad so enter 41.42 into 10 power minus 9 so enter that and once that is done click on ok so now we'll be copy pasting this again and we'll be using a resistive load choose the value of uh, the resistance to be equal to 8 ohm according to our design and click on ok so once we have done all these we'll be connecting it according to our circuit ac across the secondary side of the transformer as well and we'll be taking the output from the load with respect to the resistor so we'll be shorting these two terminals uh, over here we have to make one change so we don't have a connection between the, the diode and the negative terminals over here so uh, we'll be connecting this directly at this point and these two will be shorted at the secondary side this is how we'll be connecting the multi-winding transformer according to our requirement and once this is done we'll be taking the voltage across the resistive load over here in this particular fashion and we'll be consequently giving it to the scope so once this is done we will be uh, comparing it with the reference value and the output voltage is taken from this point the voltage that we are designing it for is what we have to enter here that is 17.5 volt and click on ok once that is done rotate this uh, by using control r and connect it to the pid controller we are using only an integral uh, controller over here we'll be entering the values of p and uh, uh, the derivative controller to be equal to zero the integral controller value is seven that is chosen so we'll basically use transfer function approach over here in order to design these values so it totally depends on your requirement uh, on what you want to improve uh, if you want to improve the steady state response uh, or any other thing with respect to uh, the response of the output waveform it depends on your design parameters and procedure that you need to follow so once this is done uh, we will be using a NOT gate and uh, we will be connecting it in this particular fashion over here and uh, the output of the NOT gate will be given to one of the switches and from here we will be taking the tapping uh, to directly from this point so uh, the reason why we are using NOT gate is that these two switches should not be turned on simultaneously if they are turned on it becomes shorted at the source side so be very careful with this so one switch should be turned on at a time as a result we are using an odd gate so once this is done uh, one of the most important parameters to be uh, entered here is the time values so one by the switching frequency that is 150 kilohertz so enter that value and we are uh, having output with respect to the voltage that is only one value so enter the output value say equal to one so once this is done uh, we will be entering the supply voltage which is uh, 50 volt in our case and uh, we have entered all the values according to our design now we'll be setting the simulation time to 0.5 seconds because these are static loads and we'll be clicking on run to see the waveform so to in order to see the waveform we will be able to see it by double clicking on the scope over here so it does take some time to simulate so be a little more patient with respect to it all right so so we'll be double clicking on the scope in order to see the waveform so if you carefully observe we're not getting 17.5 consequently it goes to zero and we're not getting it so the reason is because it has not taken our value of 50 ohms that is the magnetization resistance and inductance so i am not sure about the exact reason for it not taking that value but nevertheless we can change it now so enter it to be equal to 50 and 50 uh, higher the drops and consequently higher will be uh, the losses and consequently 
sorry the voltage drops drastically so now if you see uh, clicking on run you are getting approximately 16.5 volt if you zoom this particular uh, portion uh, using the symbol if we zoom in you are getting approximately 16.7 or something like that so although we are supposed to get 17.5 we are getting 16.7 so nevertheless that is because of the magnetization inductance and resistance that are there there will be certain drops and consequently it will result in that particular way so now how do we justify this is closed loop operation so in a lot of papers that i referred uh, i noticed that people say uh, change the load and the output voltage will remain constant so if you try that it will be the same with respect to open loop and closed loop the output voltage will always remain constant at this point so uh, in order to justify that it is in closed loop let us change the supply voltage so when there is changes in the supply consequently there should be uh, no changes in the load so if the uh, system automatically adjusts itself in order to obtain a constant output voltage then we can say voltage regulation is achieved and closed loop provides much more stability with respect to open loop isn't it so 40 volt is entered over here instead of 50 and one commonly made mistakes is students enter 40 and they only directly see the output but that should never be done because we have to change the voltage at this point as well so uh, they should remain uh, in synchronism with respect to each other so in case you give 40 and here it is 50 then uh, definitely you will not be getting the output there will be changes with respect to the closed loop system as well so now we'll click on run and see uh, the output wave and if you're still getting the same then we can justify that it is a closed loop operation yeah over here if you see uh, although there is slight amount of ripples at this point but nevertheless you are getting 16.6 which was the same with respect to the previous waveform as well so now irrespective of changing the supply so there is a tolerance limit we cannot randomly change it to 1500 or 1000 or 500 something like that there will be a certain limit like 5 to 10 percent tolerance when changes in the supply consequently the output will remain constant so in this way we can justify that closed loop operation is achieved so this is how we will say closed loop is more advantageous in comparison with open loop i hope this concept is cleared and this video gives you a clear understanding of how to simulate them in matlab in case you have any questions feel free to reach out to me by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting subscribe to our channel and uh, share in case uh, your friends want this video all right let's uh, meet in another video thanks for watching